this is Sean. What I'm working on today is I'm trying to get a solution to this. Having to refill my heavy equipment with five gallon gas cans. So this is my little F-150 and I just picked up, this is a slim 40 gallon steel transfer tank. And so the plan is to install this in the back of this pickup truck and use it to refuel my heavy equipment. And the reason I chose to put it in this truck is because even though this truck doesn't tow any heavy equipment, this was the one that I used to zip around in. And so the idea is I'll be zipping back and forth and we'll be able to get fuel. Usually I have a, a piece of machinery on a job and I don't need to refuel it on the job. And so the fact that I can refuel it here, I think it's going to work out pretty well with that small truck. So that's the plan is to get this installed today. I've got the tank set here and it's a little bit off center, but I've been messing around with it and I kind of like it because the pump is going to go right here. So I think I want it a little bit further away from the bed rail right there. So I think I'm going to set it right there. So what I need to check for now is I need to check and see what's underneath the bed right at this area. Looks like I should be clear. Let's see, I'm one, two, third rib in. There's one, two, three. So it looks like I'm clear. The way this tank bolts down is they've got the bolt, a washer, then they've got this rubber bushing, a washer and a lock nut. So they're telling you the rubber bushing, the rubber side needs to go up against the metal and the flat side needs to go down against, uh, toward the floor. So it's a little bit tight under there, so let's see if we can get that, those bottom ones started. This bolt is a little bit too long, so let me show you how to cut this off and shorten it up a little bit. So I'm going to set my lock nut on there before I make my cut. Okay, so you put your nut on there before you make your cut. That way, after you make, up, make your cut and you mess up the threads, you can back the nut back off and it'll correct the threads on the way out. Okay, not bad. Now I'm going to correct these threads. And that's it. So now the nut, when I'm trying to feel underneath there, goes right back on. So there's one side. I'm working by myself, so hopefully I can leave that 13 millimeter right there and it will catch so I can tighten against it, but we'll find out in a sec. bolt here in the corner looks like it's going to be long enough to reach through there I don't know if you can see that in there or not but let's get that put together
one consideration when you are deciding whether the pump should go on the passenger or the driver's side is the opposite side you're going to have to use to fill up the tank. So I'm not really used to pulling up to a pump on the passenger side, but I'm going to have to get used to it for this pump, for this, for this tank. So this cap is a, not only is it a filler cap, but it's also a vent. This is the pump I'm gonna use. And it's gonna have a filter on it. So I got this filter. The reason I got this filter is because it doesn't take up a lot, it's not very tall. So it's only that tall. And I didn't want something sticking way up. So when it comes to the filter, with this, with this pump, you can take your outlet from here or you can move this plug to here and take your outlet from here. So I bought the, the pipe to plumb it both ways and I'm not sure which way I want to go with it. But there's a street 90 right there and so that will come straight out of that top right there. But I also bought a 45 here and I think I want to do it with the 45. So let me see how that's going to work out. This pump had a telescoping inlet and it was it was too long so I couldn't I had to cut it down. <clears throat> so that was something I never even considered as a possibility. But that's done now so it should be about two inches off the bottom So I just filled up and it took 40 gallons. Still may not be able to reach. Well, you might be wondering why I went with a hand crank instead of a electric pump. And the reason is because all the electric pumps I could find, they all pumped like 20 gallons a minute. So you're talking pumping this thing halfway done in one minute. And none of my tanks tank that much. So this pumps about a gallon every 10 revolutions. And so I, I couldn't find an electric pump that didn't pump that, that had a, a low pump rate, flow rate, and so that's why I ended up with this hand crank one. But so far, it seems to be working pretty well. It's exactly what I was looking to do, was fuel up these little, little pieces of equipment w without using five gallon buckets.
It looks like this plug has a a little anti-siphon. So I think what you're supposed to do is is drain this hose out when you're finished. But check this out. This thing really cranks it out. Look at how smooth that is. I just stopped pumping and it's, it sounds like it's draining the hose here. I think that's what that sound is. And it looks like there's a little bit dripping out of here. And so maybe that's the ticket with this hand pump is to just let it, let the hose drain out. So, oh yeah, look at that. So, okay. So I think that's the, I think that's what you need to do with this is let it drain back out. I also want to do something here with this locking mechanism so that somebody doesn't just come over here and probably put a little pin in there or something. But yeah, so far I'm pretty excited. So that took a bunch of fuel right there. That would have been a couple of gas cans having to screw with that. And you can't even get a gas can in here. So the nozzle barely reaches and then when you get to about half halfway emptying out the can, the can hits right here as you're tipping it up. So this getting this machine was a big reason for getting this set up here with this tank and this rotary pump. So, so far so good. I was sort of thinking about getting a toolbox for this little pickup truck. And so I found these on Amazon. These are, are slim toolboxes. I didn't even know they were a thing. And so I checked my local marketplace and a guy had just posted this one. And he had a little teeny tiny Chevy pickup truck. And the thing had such a small bed on it. And the bed sat up so high he couldn't even reach into the toolbox, so he was selling it. And so I'm, I think it's gonna fit pretty well right up against my new transfer tank. So let's see if it fits. In order to clear the handle here with the box open, the box is going to sit a little ways away from the tank. And that takes quite a bit of space away from the short bed pickup but I guess I've, I can put it on here and see if I like it and if I don't I can pull it off of here so what I've got here is a toolbox mounting kit so these are just some J hooks right here and these will go in this this toolbox is already meant to have these this kind of installation on here so that kind of goes like that and uh, slides up whoop, slides up through these slots here So I got the toolbox installed, but this thing is kind of a piece of garbage. Look at this. Look at how much it flexes. So I had read this was a, pretty much like an aluminum foil box, but and for, for the size of it and what I want to do with it, and I bought it secondhand. I bought it used on Marketplace. So I may just give it a whirl and see what happens. But look, look at how it blows out when you, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I wouldn't put a knee on this or anything, but I think that's what it's going to be. So 
I also want to get a swivel elbow right here. I think that would actually would work pretty well for this. I have messed around with this a couple of times now trying to get the filter positioned right and I think I've got it now where I can spin this freely it's not going to hit the toolbox and this seems to be out of the way okay the problem is this is now sticking straight out and so if you take a look here you can see it's sticking wet right out like that so I just picked up a multi-plane swivel and so I'm hoping this will let this drop down a little bit. So let's get that installed real quick. Maybe that'll stay in there pretty well. If this hose is curled around this way, it actually holds in there fairly well. And I think that getting this to come straight down was the ticket for being able to do that. I'm still not sure that I like this nozzle because it seems like it leaks a lot. So I'm going to see next time I fill up a couple pieces of machinery, see how it does in here. But this was definitely a big improvement. So I don't know why the the pump didn't come with that but there it is as an accessory I have been using this little pickup like this for I guess a few weeks now and I think for what I'm doing with it I think it's gonna work out pretty well with this box so I've just got a few lightweight things in there, some straps, some trash bags, my measuring wheel, and it is an extremely flimsy box, but well, anyway, I think it's working out okay. There it goes. <clears throat> and, uh, the pump and the transfer tank these have been very very nice for refueling my heavy equipment so I think I'm gonna keep it like this 